Hey everybody. So this is a video that we have actually wanted to make for quite some time, but that has been honestly one of the most difficult ones for us to make. And that is discussing PTSD. Now, for whatever reason, delving into the subject of PTSD is extremely difficult in any more than a basic surface level. The one time we tried to make it through a PTSD workbook, we completely dissociated and couldn't get past the first chapter. But it is a topic that we feel like needs to be talked about more. Because the reality is, if you have a dissociative disorder, then either you directly, depending on what type of dissociative disorder, or one of your system mates has PTSD to some degree. Because they exist together. Dissociative disorders being traumagenic and PTSD being a response to trauma, this is not really surprising. But for whatever reason, it's a topic that we have a really hard time thinking about or addressing. And I think that this may actually be the case for many trauma survivors. Because acknowledging that you have PTSD or that one of your system mates struggles with PTSD means acknowledging that what happened was really a big deal. That it was traumatic enough to have a long-term effect on you. And now you would think having a dissociative disorder and knowing where that comes from and being able to get to a place of acceptance with that, that it would simply be a given, but it isn't. Accepting that you developed a dissociative disorder in response to trauma is very difficult. But accepting that you still suffer from that trauma. That not only psychological symptoms, but physical symptoms, the way that you relate to the world, still is affected by that trauma is very difficult. It's difficult to accept, in the case of DID or OSDD, that you are part of a system that your brain was so overwhelmed by traumatic experience that integration did not occur as it should have. That you as you are and the various members of your system stayed separate because of trauma. That's hard enough to accept. But then to have to delve into how that trauma still affects you, not just in dissociation because dissociation is protective. When you dissociate, you don't immediately feel the effects. Your brain is escaping it because it feels that it's impossible, that it's insurmountable. And while it very likely was, at the time, completely insurmountable for you. It doesn't necessarily have to be now, but your brain doesn't know that. Your brain creates pathways, and those pathways get worn in by experience, and trauma teaches your brain to dissociate when you have a dissociative disorder and PTSD, or in our particular case, complex PTSD, which is PTSD with 
extra other symptoms that are not normally associated with it. It creates these same warning pathways, the same rewiring of the brain. And it's very difficult for us and for many other survivors that we've talked to to accept that a big portion of the way that we look at the world is still through a lens of trauma. Even after almost 10 years of therapy, or 10 years, I don't even know, I've, I'm, I've lost track at this point, but it's at least close to that. No, it is 10 years by now, but even after that, there are still things that affect us and that affect me a lot more often than any of us necessarily want to admit. I am very often hypervigilant, especially in crowds or unfamiliar places. I like to keep my back to a wall because it doesn't feel safe to be exposed to a room full of people. I still very much do not like to be touched from behind. It's triggering and it scares me. And it's hard to admit that. It's hard to accept how much it still affects all of us. Now, yes, not every member of our system directly deals with the symptoms of PTSD. Some members of our system, they were essentially created in order to function without those symptoms to help us appear more typical to the outside world. But a great deal, many of us experience PTSD in some form or another. And it isn't easy to admit that even after all this time, I still have nightmares. I see or smell something that triggers a memory of trauma and I'm back in that place. Not necessarily visually, because I don't personally often have visual flashbacks, but emotionally, I'm right there. My brain, my body, my emotions, they're responding like it's happening right now. And what I'm seeing doesn't matter to my brain at all. It's like white noise. My brain isn't processing what I'm seeing in those moments. And yes, having been in therapy as long as we have been, the flashbacks are not as often and we have better ways to cope with them, but they still happen. And sometimes triggers happen in ways that we don't expect and that we don't like. Because a very unfortunate truth about living with PTSD in any form is that when you're triggered, you don't always respond in the most socially appropriate ways. It can be embarrassing. It can make you come off as rude or hostile. The reality is you're not thinking from a rational adult standpoint, you're thinking with trauma brain. 
you're reacting out of fear, out of a desperation for self-preservation. You're scared. And I think people need to realize and have a bit more compassion for the fact that these reactions aren't something that any of us has control over necessarily. That we can cope with them, we can learn to manage them, we can learn to stop flashbacks from getting worse when they start, we can learn how to pull ourselves out of them sometimes. But it takes a lot of work to really truly heal from trauma. It's not an overnight experience and it's not going to happen instantaneously. So as much as we want to be able to make just an educational video about the effects of PTSD, it's not something that we can. It, it, we're not there. What we can do is talk about our experience with it and maybe help others feel less alone and help others realize that may not be educated about PTSD and trauma and its effects, how stigmatized trauma responses really can be. Now, of course, if a person is lashing out physically or harming others, this is not okay. It does not matter the reason, it is perfectly reasonable to get yourself away from that person and make yourself safe. But we see all too often friends, loved ones, and partners getting angry with the people in their life for having trauma responses, for crying, for hiding, for curling up into a ball. And we want people to understand that that isn't something that just magically gets better. And it's not something they have control over. It's not something we have control over. When a bad trigger happens and those mechanisms kick in to try to protect us and that PTSD symptomology just starts going full force, we are not in a rational thinking state. We are afraid. Like, for example, one of our abusers had a very particular appearance. And to this day, if I see someone who has that particular appearance, even though rationally I know it's not the same person, I can't stay. I have to leave. Everything in me tells me to run, to hide. And I do. And it is embarrassing. I'm not going to pretend that it isn't. And oftentimes, when things like this will happen, somebody else will switch out to try to deal with things. And it's still something that we struggle with. So, we just wanted to let everybody out there know that if you're struggling, no matter how long you've been on your healing journey, it's okay. It's okay to have places where you get stuck or where you stumble. And it's okay if there's a particular area of healing that's difficult for you. We've been at this for a very long time and we still have these struggles. And we know of other systems who have been on this healing journey even longer than we have, 
who have been going to therapy and have progressed further in their healing in other ways and still have areas in which they struggle. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. And it takes time. So, we hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. Have a good day, everybody.